Welcome everybody. I'm so happy to be with all of you today. Um, my name is Monica Flores and I'm from La Paz, Bolivia. And this is my first time at the Polyglot Gathering. So I'm very excited and happy to be sharing this information with you. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, so this workshop will be conducted in English, um, but you will see slides in Spanish, okay? And at the end, you will be able to ask questions, um, whether in English or Spanish. I hope you enjoy this session. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. Okay, so today I'll tell you about three fun linguistic features of Bolivian Indian Spanish. And this is what we are gonna do today. Uh, first, you may wonder where is Bolivia? <laughs> so I'll tell you where Bolivia is located. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about our linguistic diversity here in Bolivia. And then I'll tell you why you should be interested in us or in the Spanish we speak. And then we'll just hit the main part, which are the three fun linguistic features. First of all, the diminutives, then the use of a definite article before names, and then Aymara Borowins. And as I said before, at the end, you'll have some time to ask some questions. All right, so let's continue. So where is Bolivia? You may wonder. So Bolivia is located at the heart of South America. And next to the map, you can see um, the Bolivian flag. It's a very colorful flag, I love it. And yeah, so here we are in uh, South America and I'm actually in La Paz. I'm from La Paz and I live here. This is the highest city in the world, if you didn't know this. Uh, we are at uh, 6,000, um, sorry, 3,600 meters above sea level. Can you imagine that? It's like living on top of Mount Fuji in Japan. <laughs> so our city looks like that, as you can see in the picture. And it's really um, a very interesting city to visit. Um, on the picture, you can see our mountain that is called Illimani, Illimani Mountain. And it's kind of the most beautiful mountain that you can see. And it always makes me feel happy whenever I see it. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the linguistic diversity here in Bolivia. Bolivia and Guatemala are the countries with the uh, biggest indigenous population. Um, in Bolivia, 62% of our population belong to an indigenous group. 30% uh, identify themselves as Quechua, that's one indigenous group. 25% belong to the Aymara group, another indigenous group. And 6% belong to the rest of the 32 indigenous groups here in Bolivia. So as you can see, we do have uh, you know, a big linguistic diversity. In the picture, you can see Guarani women from Bolivia. Guarani is another uh, indigenous group. And in La Paz, where I live, we speak um, an indigenous language called Aymara. And that's the language you will mostly hear in La Paz and also in other uh, regions, um, we call them departamentos that are also Indian or in the Indian, Indian region. The other uh, places are called Potosí, Oruro. So in these parts of Bolivia, we speak this Spanish that's a little bit different. That's why it's our dialect, our Indian dialect, because of this you know, influence from uh, Aymara. Now, why should you be interested in this? Uh, first of all, you know, we have to understand that uh, the Bolivian population is not so big. We are just 11 million people here. And, you know, meeting a Bolivian person might be really like <laughs> something that won't happen so frequently. And so if you have met a Bolivian person, I think you are lucky. We are like lucky charms. And yeah, so even though we are not so many people, we do have a very big territory. Our country is very big. But still, we are a mystery to the world. Uh, many people compare us with um, uh, Peruvian people or Ecuadorian people, but we are different. We have our own cultures, and there is still so much you can learn about us. Also, I think uh, there are really amazing places in Bolivia. I don't know if you have heard of 
Uyuni Salt Flat. You can see a picture there. It's really a fantastic place to visit. Many people come here to Bolivia just to visit this place. And, you know, from my linguistic point of view, I think if you come to Bolivia, especially to the Indian region, you will be able to learn Spanish more uh, easily. Why? Because we speak Spanish very slowly, <laughs> very clearly. Uh, if we compare our Spanish, our dialect here uh, to other dialects, for example, Argentinian or Chilean, uh, those dialects are more difficult and more challenging for people to understand and to learn. But if you come here to Bolivia, Spanish is spoken very slowly. So perfect place for beginners and also perfect place for people who want to polish their Spanish. Also, you should be interested in us and our Spanish because you want to really increase your you know, linguistic and cultural repertoire. You want to know more about different uh, countries and cultures. I've been learning so much in this polyglot gathering. Thank you so much. I learned some Ukrainian and I heard the beautiful you know, sounds of uh, Ukrainian and also all the other languages. It's just fantastic. So uh, I'm so happy to be part of this. Now, uh, just a preview about the diminutives. Um, <laughs> if you are learning Spanish, if you speak Spanish, you know that diminutives are really important. And um, no matter where you are, you know, if you're from Spain or from Argentina, from, from Chile, we do use diminutives. But in my experience as a traveler and as a linguist, we are, Bolivian people are the kings and queens of diminutives. We use them all the time. It's just amazing <laughs> and it's really fun. So yeah, I think if we compare it, I haven't done like serious research, but yeah, based on my observation, we do love diminutives and it's really, really like something we use every single day. Now, just a question there in the Spanish so we can start warming up and you know getting all these examples that I'm gonna show you in the Spanish. The question is, me das un pedacito? That's, uh, you know, if you want some cake, <laughs> me das un pedacito. Pedacito comes from pedazo. Um, and so we do the diminutive and we do pedacito. The suffixes that you see there, the four suffixes there, are the ones that we use here in Bolivia in the Indian region. There are other suffixes to form diminutives in Spanish, you know, in other types of, in other dialects. But these are the ones that we use here. The first one, ito, second, ita, uh, third, cito, fourth, cita. And then we have all the plural forms because you know that in Spanish we do a lot of plural forms and we form it with the S. All right. But now, why do we use diminutives? And I think it's important, you know, whenever we learn something new to understand why, not just be like, okay, this is, you know, diminutives are part of Spanish, but why? So you can feel it, you can really use it, that you can remember it, it can be memorable for you. So uh, why do we use diminutives here? It's because we wanna fit in, we wanna be one, part or we want to be part of the community so just be one of one local a local person right here in la paz we call people from la paz paseño for you know if we want to call it uh, paseño to a to a man and paseña to a woman right so paseño paseña so just to be you know ser un paseño más just be part of the community and just you know uh uh, so we don't stand out, actually. We are a very collective <laughs> culture, too. So if you want to be one of us, then you have to use diminutives. Um, another reason or reasons uh, why we use diminutives is because we want to show respect. We want to show affection. And we also, you know, whenever we ask for a favor, you know, we are always asking for favors because we are a collective uh, culture. And I'm sure you're also, you in your country, in your culture, you ask for favors, right? Because, you know, as human beings, we, we need help from other people. So if you want to ask for a favor and make sure that the person will say yes, <laughs> then you have to use diminutives, okay? So that will assure <laughs> the fact that you will get that favor from the other person. And yeah, so these are some of the reasons. And the last one and my favorite one is just it's because it's fun. It's really fun. And um, 
Um, I've lived in other countries and whenever I come back to, to La Paz, I just feel like really, really happy because I hear all these diminutives, you know, that I haven't heard in a while. And it's really, really interesting and fun. And uh, like we say here in Spanish, es chistoso. <laughs> Neutral Spanish es divertido. <laughs> but here, es chistoso. And we use it very naturally, of course. Now, let's get started with some examples. And the way I did this is for you to really, um, you know, um, get a lot from this experience. I created some examples with context and uh, a little bit of information so you can remember them and you can use them too whenever you speak Spanish, okay? So the first one is, tienes mucho trabajo y poco tiempo. Pobrecito. So here, it's a, it's a phrase that we can say to a friend who is really working a lot, who doesn't have time for fun. Maybe a friend who's working on his thesis or working on something very serious and he's just tired, you know, and doesn't have any time for fun. So I can say, pobrecito, to show that I care for this person or that, um, you know, I'm showing empathy for the person. Pobrecito. That would be, that would be for a man. And for a woman, it would be pobrecita. So if you have a friend like that, you can tell them that. The second example, this is from daily life, real examples, by the way. So this was said by a professor actually last week because I've been taking some uh, workshops uh, at the university where I work um, just to improve, um, you know, uh, the, the, the use of my voice and my presentation skills. And this professor said, no nos alcanzaría el tiempito para explicar todo eso. So, you know, in a formal setting, you, you might think, oh, no, diminutives are not used in formal settings. Mm, they are used in formal settings. And I have, I have heard them in formal settings too. Why? Because the professor wants to connect with the audience and wants to show also some kind of affection too. So I think that's also a technique because when you teach, you have to connect with people. You have to show that you care for them. And so I, I think that's why the professor used this, um, you know, diminutive here. And you can use it too if you want. So uh, tiempito comes from tiempo, which means time, right? And uh, we do the diminutive with ito, right? Tiempito. Another one that I really like, and I heard this at the supermarket. So here in La Paz or in Bolivia, whenever you buy something at the supermarket and you want to pay for it, the cashier will ask you for um, a, a code that we have, a tax code. So uh, the cashier will say, algún datito para su factura. The factura will be the invoice, right? So algún datito para su factura. Uh, datito comes from dato. And, you know, the cashier decided to use a diminutive because, you know, she's asking for some kind of favor there, <laughs> you know, provide some information, right? And I also noticed that we don't usually use por favor. <laughs> and so I think the diminutive is also replacing that part. So because we want to, you know, show that we are polite as well. So that's why we use diminutives as well. So algún datito para su factura. And another one that I think it's very important for all of us at the Polyglot Gathering, because we are all learning different languages. We want to polish many languages that we have already learned. Or we want to start maybe a language that is really, you know, challenging, like Japanese or Chinese. To me, those will be very challenging languages to learn. So this is a kind of an encouragement phrase in Spanish. And we can use diminutives with them, uh, or with this word, sorry, um, with this phrase. So poco a poquito, that will be one version poco a poquito, or we can use two diminutives there, poquito a poquito. <laughs> what does this mean? Step by step, right? So little by little, so we can make progress, you know, poquito a poquito. And I just uh, read a post on Facebook from, from a friend who said, or who posted, poquito a poquito se hace muchito. <laughs> Three diminutives in that phrase, my God. That's why I told you we are the kings and queens of diminutives. It's just unbelievable. So 
poquito a poquito se hace muchito means like little by little you get to do something. But I think in Spanish it sounds much better. <laughs> poquito a poquito se hace muchito o se logra muchito, you can say as well. All right. Um, another one that is very common here in La Paz is that uh, we use uh, different types of transportation means. These are the kind of the most common ones, minivans and these old buses. We also have modern buses now, but you will see, if you come to La Paz, you will see them everywhere. Now, the thing is that we don't have any minivan stops or any bus stops for the old ones. For the modern ones, yes, we do have bus stops, but for these ones, we don't. So what do we do when we want to get off? We say, um, bajo en la esquinita, <laughs> which means I'll get off on the corner, right? I'll get off on the corner. But we say it like that because we want to make sure that the driver will stop. <laughs> we are asking for a favor, right? We are asking um, the driver to do something for us. So we have to sound a little bit like, you know, more polite and all that. So bajo en la esquinita. Esquinita comes from esquina. And we do the diminutive there. So we are always saying bajo en la esquinita. Not always. I mean, not, not all the time we will say that. But yeah, we, we use it. All right. So another example is a little bit more modern now that we love pictures, you know, like selfies and all that. So you will say this to, to your friends or to your colleagues. It's a question, you know, una fotito. And fotito comes from foto. And we do the diminutive. And as you can see, we are not asking like, please, you know, like, can we take a picture, please? Um, I think the diminutive is replacing that as well. So that's why we use it a lot. And thank you for your questions there. We are going to answer them uh, after we finish. Thank you so much. If you have more questions, please go ahead or comment or anything that comes to your mind when, when I'm presenting, just go ahead. Another example um, that I wanted to share with you is uh, this one. <laughs> so we have the word ahora, and then we have the first diminutive, ahorita, and the second diminutive, ahoritita. <laughs> so you can see we are using two diminutives in one word, my God. So double diminutive, I'll call it, right? So ahora, ahorita, ahoritita, which means, okay, right away. So this is something, you know, like when people are putting pressure on us, like, mm, have you finished that project? Or have you sent that email? Oh, ahorita, ahorita, or ahoritita, I'll do it now. <laughs> but generally we don't do it right away, but we, we like to say that so the other person will feel like relaxed. <laughs> and so as you can see, we use diminutives also with adverbs, not only with nouns. And uh, some other examples related to time, we have, of course, lo hago ahorita, lo hago ahoritita. Lo lavo en un ratito, that comes from rato. Eh, un minutito, <laughs> a minute, right? Un minutito, just very, very, um, you know, like diminutives are everywhere there. And here I wanted to share a picture of a dog that I rescued. Uh, her name is Chiquita. <laughs> and that's already her name in the diminutive form. And uh, well, the, the word comes from chica, right? And then we do the diminutive chiquita. Um, and we can also do diminutives with names, right? So if, if you wanna try, we can, um, you know, I can tell you if, if you're creating your diminutive the right way, if you wanna try. So to me, it would be like Monica, Moniquita. And even though I'm already, you know, a grown up and all that, people will call me like that sometimes, you know? Why? because they want a favor, <laughs> right? Or they wanna, you know, sound affectionate as well. Okay, here are some more examples that you can see. Um, number three is really <laughs> something modern, you know, about break rooms. This was said also by the professor I told you about before. You know, entren a las salitas, um, the break rooms, right? So instead of saying entren a las salas, we do a diminutive. So lots of examples there. And which is your favorite? Which has been your favorite? Tell us, please. All right. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the definite article before names. It's very short. Um, as I, I, I've told you before, I've, I've lived in different countries and I've traveled a lot. And I have observed that only here in Bolivia and in Chile, we do this. 
and in other places it's not i mean it's not part of the rules actually this will break the rules actually and and but it's very common here in la paz so we use whether el or la before a name for example we say la claudia siempre nos ayuda or el andres nunca hace la tarea why do we do this because you know if we are part of a group and we say oh la claudia no vino we know that we are talking about one specific person that we all know so that's the idea this unfortunately causes a lot of problems uh, when people are learning english because uh, you know my students tend to use a lot of the 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 everywhere before names and so we have to um well i have to help them understand that in english you don't do this but yeah in our spanish in our dialect here we do it all right here are more examples i'm not going to go over this because i think we don't have a lot of time but you can see them that every time we have a name we we do the um you know we use a, a definite article all right now the juicy, juicy part, because I know as polyglots, you love learning about new languages. And I told you at the beginning of the session that Aymara is the indigenous language that we speak here in La Paz or in the Indian region as well, in Oruro or Potosí. And so whenever we speak Spanish, we use these borrowings. And you know, um, there is a percentage of people here in, in, in La Paz or in the Indian region that um, you know, um, identify themselves as mixed race, you know, like um, they don't identify as Aymara or Quechua. And uh, even those people who don't even speak any native language, they use Aymara words. Uh, and they might not know it, <laughs> but we, we all use Aymara borrowings. Okay, the first one is Yapa, Yapa. So, you can see in the picture farmer's market, a farmer's market. Uh, whenever we go there and we want to buy some produce, you know, whether fruit or anything that we need, uh, we will ask, you know, the, the seller, you know, y la yapa casera? And this means like, where is my extra something? Where is my freebie? Where is my, my gift? Because I already bought something from you. So the, the ladies who sell the produce will give us something else if we ask this question, which is, I think it's very nice. You know, like ilayapa, and you get like an extra carrot or an extra potato or something extra. And we can also do diminutives with this, uh, with the Amara word. So uh, ilayapita, <laughs> which is really fun and sweet I think um, another word that I really like is Emilia Emilia means uh, just girl 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 it's just that that's in on the dictionary <laughs> I'm our dictionary however um, because of you know our history and um, discrimination as well Emilia has been used in a in a negative con with a negative connotation uh, so uh, people who uh, want to make uh, another person feel a little bit bad, they would say something like, no seas una Emilia, or es una Emilia más, which means something derogative, you know, uh, like maybe rude or not well behaved. But in the past years, uh, this has been changing, and, um, you know, people are kind of more empowered, women are more empowered, and so. I think Emilia now has a, a better, you know, kind of connotation. So I could say, uh, soy Emilia y que, <laughs> or um, el poder de las Emilias, and me gusta esa Emilia. <laughs> so I, I, I prefer, you know, the positive side and not the negative side. But yeah, I have to acknowledge that, yeah, it could be used also in a, in a you know, derogative way. All right. The next one, very sweet, especially if you have uh, wawas. <laughs> so wawa means baby. And we use it like this. We, I have many examples. La wawa está comiendo, as you can see on the picture. Ya despertó la wawa. Oh. <laughs> ¿Y tus wawas? This is a very common question whenever you meet somebody, you know, a friend. You ask, you know, ¿Y tus wawas? And your children, how are they doing, right? And guagua que no llora, no mama. This is a saying here in La Paz. Um, what does it mean? I really like it because it's empowering too. Uh, so when you wanna, you know, really speak up for yourself, you know, when uh, you feel like, uh, maybe you feel shy first and you don't wanna speak up for yourself, somebody will tell you, guagua que no llora, no mama, you know? 
Like if you don't say anything, you won't get it. <laughs> and literally this means, um, you know, um, it, the baby doesn't cry. If the baby doesn't cry, it doesn't get fed. So that's the saying we use here. And I, I have heard this one since I was um, a little girl from my parents, you know, wawa que no llora no mama. Another one that is really cool is uh, chulla. Uh, this has a plosive sound that I can't really make because I don't speak Aymara uh, fluently. I have learned Aymara, I have taken classes, but I'm not fluent in Aymara. So this will be a plosive sound, you know, the, the apostrophe that you see there um, will be a plosive sound. Chulla, I'm trying to make the, the sound. And it means just like, you know, um, like um, the sock that you lost, you know, and you just want, you just have one. <laughs> so quedó chulla, or mi media está chulla. That's a very common phrase that we say here in La Paz. Or we can also say, no te quedes chulla, busca una pareja. So that in terms of romantic, you know, relationships, like don't, don't stay single, <laughs> get, get a partner, find a boyfriend, find a girlfriend. So no te quedes chulla. Um, another one that is really, I think, nice, and especially for us, I mean, all, all of us around the world, because we have, you know, um, we have faced uh, the pandemic, and I think many people felt this way, you know, purpu, purpu. This also has a plosive sound. I can't really make it, but I'll try purpu. Uh, it means sad or depressed and really like not feeling good, you know? And so, desde la pandemia está purpu. Hagamos algo para que no estés purpu. Such a nice word, I think. And I think we all can identify or relate to this word because we have been there. We have felt sad and maybe, you know, uh, we have lost hope. And so we have felt purpu. The next one, uh, related to also emotions and, you know, kind of, I think, Many Aymara words that we use are really related to our emotions. The word is kaima, and it means like not showing energy, like being like a party pooper, you know? Um, so we can say, él siempre es un kaima <laughs> en las fiestas. So he doesn't dance, he doesn't sing, he doesn't drink, he doesn't do anything. Él siempre es un kaima en las fiestas. Or no seas kaima y ven a divertirte. <laughs> So I will say to all the people who didn't join us, you know, for the polygon gathering that they are kaimas. <laughs> they didn't want to have fun. Another one is uh, chascas, which means just hair generally, or especially when our hair is just not, <laughs> not good, you know, like when we have a bad hair day, that will be chasca. So some examples, ¿qué pasó? ¿Y esas chascas? <laughs> oh, tu chasca está buena. O voy a ir al peluquero para que corte mis chascas. Um, yeah, so it's really fun, especially if, I mean, if you don't have a good hair day, then, you know, people will tell you that. And the last one, and actually one of my favorite ones, very related to our traditions as well, the word is ahayu. And you can see the picture there. I'm sure you have seen this movie somewhere. It's very popular among children and I think among adults too. I, I, I loved the, the, the movie soul and a high you means soul i love it you know and the thing is that here in la paz in the indian region um we uh whenever we uh, face something terrible like it could be maybe an accident you know you could have broken uh your knee or your your i don't know your your foot or you could have uh, fallen down on the street or tripped uh you get scared and that's true i mean have you ever fallen down on the street or have you ever had an accident you have gotten scared right so here we believe that when that happens our ahayu leaves you know our soul leaves our body because we are scared so what what we have to do is to you know call the soul back and we do it literally, like we do it in Spanish and we mix it with Aymara there. So we will say like, vente, vente, like come back, come back to me. And the person will say, what are you doing, right? ¿Qué haces? Estoy llamando a mi ajayu. So I'm calling my soul back. 
And I think, you know, you, you, you can tell me, you know, like modern medicine, everything, Western medicine is, is, is okay. But in the past years, we have discovered that it's not all about medicine and the body. Actually, everything is connected. We are mind, you know, spirit, our soul and the body. So I think this is real. Last year, I had a terrible accident. Terrible, terrible. I broke two bones. Um, I broke my ankle. Terrible fracture. And after I was able to walk again, I went back to the place where I, I broke my bones and I did this ritual and it helped me a lot. And whether you believe in it or not, I mean, it's just, you don't lose anything. <laughs> I think it's important to acknowledge that we have a soul and it's our ahayu. <laughs> All right, so that was our last word. So, yus pagara, which means thank you in Aymara, yus pagara, gracias, thank you. These are my social uh, media uh, contacts. Um, on Instagram and Facebook, you can find me on Go Multilingual Bolivia. I created this community to promote language learning. And also on LinkedIn or YouTube, I have a, a channel where I mainly uh, teach English. And, but you will also see a little bit of Bolivian culture there. And also, if you want to email me, my email is there. Um, I really enjoyed um, telling you about this because I think our country is now very well known. So thank you so much for being there and asking all the questions. I'll, I'll get to the questions in a little bit. Thank you so much. All right. So now um, I think we can start with the questions. And so um, I think they will just come up on the screen. Um, if not, I'll just go ahead and check them out here. All right. So Vadim says, I heard that Bolivia recognized all of its indigenous languages uh, as official languages about a decade ago. How does this work in practice, especially for languages smaller than Quechua and Aymara? Oh, great question. It is true. So um, we all our languages are official here in Bolivia. Now, in reality, it's very challenging. So the changes I have seen is that, you know, um, public, um, you know, public officers, you know, people who work for the government have to uh, take Aymara or Quechua or Guarani classes in order to work for the government. I have seen that. However, I have to say that these courses are really like mini courses, like maybe the courses will last a month or two months, three months. I think that's not enough for a person to fully learn a language. So I think there is a lot to do there. And in terms of the other languages, I have to say that not much has been done. There is a, a big preference uh, for Aymara and Quechua. And I think it comes like this, Aymara, Quechua, and then we have Guarani kind of at the end, and then we have all the rest. And uh, we do have, of course, this diversity, but if we don't get support from you know the uh, authorities or the government, then there isn't much we can do, but there are lots of beautiful languages that are still unknown for many Bolivians, actually, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so the next question. All right, thank you. Um, I wonder if the use of the definite article with names is a result of German influence. Ooh, because colloquial German uses it in the exact same. I didn't know this, and I just started learning German last year just a little bit, and I didn't know this. Thank you so much for sharing this. Um, it could be true. I, I will need to do some research because uh, we had um, German a German community here in La Paz and also French community and an Italian community. So in the, um, if I'm not wrong, in the 70s, in the 60s, 70s, we have all these communities here and it could have happened, but I, I, I don't have any, like, you know, um, I don't have proof of this, but it sounds like very interesting. And I didn't know this. I'm going to take notes of this. <laughs> it's so interesting. But yeah, but here in La Paz, it's definitely something you will hear. And it causes problems, as I said before, if you're learning uh, English, especially. So they will really like to use that, 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 that all the time. So I have to kind of help my students, you know, struggle. When they struggle with this, I have to help them to notice this. Thank you so much, Elise. All right. So the next one. 
Are Quechua and Aymara related at all? The Aymara words you have discussed sound very similar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I think there are many words that are shared, but these are two different languages. So I don't, I don't know a lot about Quechua. Um, I just know, I think, a couple of words like Ari. Ari means yes. And uh, I know Quechua is a very poetic language that I know. And so these are totally different languages, but they sometimes intersect in some terms. But all the ones that I have told you, I have made, I, I made sure that all of them are from Aymara origin. I, I have a dictionary. I don't have it right now with me, but I have an, um, an official dictionary, um, Aymara Spanish, and all of them are Aymara. And about Quechua, um, yeah, I, I cannot tell you a lot about it right now, but yeah, uh, different language. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Um, okay, very interested in how you relate diminutives to politeness, avoiding por favor, etc. Any other areas where culture influences the Spanish spoken? Uh, convert Spanish in Peru and Chile. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I think it is because actually in Aymara, for example, um, there isn't the word, uh, you have seen the word uh, use pagara, right? But that comes from Spanish actually. And I have asked my Aymara teacher back, back when I was learning Aymara, if there was a specific word for, for gracias, um, but there isn't. So they had to create the word. And so, Culture definitely is, you know, a big influence in, in language. So yeah, I'm sure there are other, you know, influences from, from, from the culture and also the diminutive. We don't generally say por favor. And I think it's a way we use diminutives to replace that. So our, you know, our uh, request doesn't sound so, so harsh and so rough. And also because I have to say that uh, Aymara culture, you know, people are a little bit shy and cold. Um, people in the world think that all South Americans are all like, ooh, you know, very affectionate and nice, you know, but no, I'm, I'm, Aymara culture, you know, people from the Aymara culture are kind of reserved and shy and sometimes they have, you know, some trouble expressing their emotions. So I think that's the way to compensate for this. And I like it because it's it's a nice way to also show affection or politeness as well. And in terms of Peru and Chile, um, I, um, I, I wouldn't know exactly because I think that the cultures will be different. And I, have, I haven't really lived in Peru and Chile. I have visited these countries, beautiful countries, but the cultures are different too. I, like Peruvians are definitely, to me, I mean, if we compare Bolivians and Peruvians, Peruvians are really, really outspoken and outgoing. And here, uh, you know, the uh, people from the Indian region, we are more reserved. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, as there is so much linguistic var um, variance uh, across the continent, are there any features, quirks of Bolivian Indian Spanish which are understood well by other Spanish speakers? Um, yeah, I would say yes, definitely. I mean, like, I mean, uh, whenever you go to another country where Spanish is spoken, like whenever I visit the Chile, for example, like I, I, I myself, I wouldn't understand uh, because I wouldn't understand what they were saying because of the speed. Um, and I'm sure they will also have problems because we use our Spanish is unique because it has been influenced by Aymara, especially in, in this region. So yeah, I'm sure they might have some issues, but of course it's Spanish. So, uh, you know, when we are interactive with foreigners, we are also aware of that. So we will, you know, like rephrase probably and say something more neutral. So yeah, we can understand definitely any, any person who speaks Spanish, but they might also have some issues, but at the same time, we, you know, in the end we can communicate, it's the same language. Thank you. Okay, is there any influence from Quechua or does it tend to just be Aymara? Actually, in my research for this session, I have noticed that we do use Quechua words too. Uh, but I didn't want to include them because I wanted to focus more on the Aymara borrowings. But we do use uh, one that I remember right now is Opa. Opa means like somebody who is um, a little bit like a fool. 
and or maybe somebody who's not paying attention or somebody who's not understanding things and that word comes from quechua but we use it in in spanish here as well so uh yeah there, there are definitely uh words that we also you know quechua borrowings that we use definitely probably more in other regions like maybe in cochabamba or in sucre where quechua is also spoken i'm sure there are more words and yeah thank you all right thank you so much for all your questions i hope you enjoyed the session and yeah um i hope you um i hope to see you maybe next uh, next year next year because um, i'm planning on going to the next polygon gathering thank you so much bye